he donates his quarterly salary to a very good cause. On Wednesday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders announced that President Donald Trump's second quarterly salary will be donated to the United States Department of Education. During a recent press conference, Sanders presented to Secretary Betsy DeVoe with a check for $100,000. DeVoe then took to the podium to praise Trump's efforts, declaring the money will be used to fund a STEM-focused camp. The president is committed to our nation's students and to reforming education in America so that every child, no matter their zip code, has access to high-quality education, said DeVoe. Today's and tomorrow's economy requires students prepared for STEM careers, DeVoe said. That's why we've decided to use the president's second quarter salary to host a STEM-focused camp for students at the Department of Education. We want to encourage as many children as possible to explore STEM fields in the hope that many develop a passion for these fields. President Trump's first quarterly salary check was donated to the Department of Interior and has been put to use in restoring two projects at Antietam National Battlefield. Michelle Obama comes out from hiding to make race bait announcement. Michelle and Barack Obama have increased the racial divide in this country with their race baiting. That's why Americans were frustrated this week when Hollywood director Ava DuVernay posted a melodramatic message about one of Michelle's ancestors on Twitter. Become your ancestor's wildest dream, DuVernay wrote on Twitter, along with a photo of a memorial that pays tribute to one of Michelle's ancestors, Melvinia Shields, a slave. She was born a slave in South Carolina in 1844, the inscription reads, according to the photo. At age six she was brought to the nearby Shields Farm in what is now Rex, Clayton County, Georgia. Her family would endure a five-generation journey that began in oppression and would lead her descendant to become First Lady of the United States of America, Michelle Obama. There's is a story of hope. What do you think about this post? Should we be turning our attention to the future instead of 150 years in the past? NFL team humiliates Kaepernick just moments before signing him. Last year, former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick made headlines for refusing to stand during the national anthem before his games to protect against racial inequality. After a terrible season, he ended up being dropped by the team. He has spent the last year desperately trying to find another team to take him in. Rumor has it the Miami Dolphins were preparing to sign Kaepernick after their starting quarterback was hurt. Just when it looked like Kaepernick was going to have a job again, the team went in another direction and signed 34-year-old Jay Cutler instead. This was a humiliating moment for Kaepernick. Jay Cutler quit the sport and got an entirely new profession and he'll still get signed before Kaepernick, one Twitter user wrote. Others shared a similar sentiment. It's clear Kaepernick is paying the price for his attention-seeking antics, which sparked outrage among the men and women who have fought for our freedom. This isn't the first time Kaepernick was shut down last minute. Seahawks coach Pete Carroll also said the team couldn't sign him, claiming he's a starter in this league. And we have a star. Trump gives devastating blow to Rosie O'Donnell. What she does next really shows how pathetic she is. For more than a year now, Rosie O'Donnell's Twitter timeline has been filled with vile insults hurled at the Commander-in-Chief. President Trump and O'Donnell have been engaging in a decade-long feud. This week, O'Donnell went after Trump for attempting to take the high road and put the nonsense to rest. The feud reached a new low earlier this year when the comedian and actress attacked 11-year-old Barrett Trump, suggesting that he had autism. First Lady Melania Trump threatened Rosie with a lawsuit in response. But that didn't slow her down. After months of being attacked, Trump finally decided he didn't have time for Rosie's disgusting comments. He decided to block her from engaging with him on Twitter. Of course, O'Donnell made the slight big news, posting screenshots and encouraging her followers to continue to attack the president for her sake. Some of her disgusting liberal followers even lamented that they had not been blocked yet. O'Donnell gave them tips on how to truly get under the president's skin. She even threatened to sue, 
piggybacking on a lawsuit that theorized that the American people have a right to see the president's tweets on his personal account. Clearly, Trump has bigger things to worry about than a failed comedian, but this liberal insanity is just getting in. McCain caught red-handed making plans to take Trump out. Last week, Arizona Senator John McCain turned his back on the Republican Party by shooting down the Obamacare repeal bill. Now, he's been busted attempting to make plans to take out President Trump. McCain is allegedly trying to ruin Trump's decision to rethink sanctions on Russia. The Arizona senator is attempting to make Americans believe that he and the president have equal power, saying, we are the president's equal, not subordinates. Our commanders-in-chief, not our commanders in the field, are responsible for this failure, in Afghanistan, McCain said. I urge the president to resolve the differences within his administration as soon as possible and decide on a policy and strategy that can achieve our national security interests in Afghanistan and the region. If the president fails to do this by the time the Senate takes up the defense authorization bill in September, I will offer an amendment to that legislation, which will provide such a strategy. Trump fired back at McCain's comments his Twitter page on Thursday. Our relationship with Russia is at an all-time and very dangerous low. You can thank Congress, the same people that can't even give us hair. He wrote. Congress could not even negotiate a health care bill after seven years of talking, Trump added in a statement. By limiting the executive's flexibility, this bill makes it harder for the United States to strike good deals for the American people and will drive China, Russia, and North Korea much closer together. The framers of our Constitution put foreign affairs in the hands of the president. What do you think? Is McCain crossing serious lines? At last Trump drains the swamp, 11,000 federal employees fired. Before Donald Trump took office, he made a promise to drain the swamp of Washington unlike any other president before. Now, just months into his presidency, he is already fulfilling this promise in a major way. In just six months, Trump has released nearly 11,000 federal employees, reversing a two-year trend of gains throughout the executive branch. And this is just the beginning. Trump is continuing to clean house. He recently fired both his chief of staff Rians Priebus and his communications director Anthony Scaramucci. He has also allegedly suggested firing the top commander in the Afghanistan war, General John Nicholson. We aren't winning, Trump said of the war in a mid-July meeting. During the meeting, Trump also criticized his military advisors, including Secretary of Defense James Mattis. Trump could not comprehend why Mattis is losing ground in Afghanistan after he received Signoff to make changes to military activity there. Mattis has argued that the United States is losing because it doesn't have the right strategy. Shocking new black tax bill paid by the white people introduced by Congressional Black Caucus. According to recent reports from the Washington Examiner, Representative John Conyers and the Congressional Black Circus, CBC, had reissued a bill to study reparations for America's history of slavery. This is standard procedure for Conyers, who has been introducing the measure almost every year for the past couple decades. Apparently, he thinks the government should tax white people just for being white. Sadly, this is just the latest Democratic attempt to reverse black poverty at the expense of all white Americans regardless of whom they are or where they came from. This absolutely outrageous proposal is stuck in the past and, if passed, would be ridiculously punitive to hard-working white Americans. The real solution to poverty is not about government handouts or giving out other people's money, it depends on teaching those in poverty how to successfully care for their families. Slavery was outlawed in America over 150 years ago. At this point, Nobody living in America has owned slaves or been a slave. Furthermore, not every white American's ancestors participated in the horrendous trade. To make that assertion is short-sighted and biased. Breaking witness agrees to testify against Hillary Clinton. 
Hillary Clinton has spent the past few months complaining about Donald Trump's collusion with Russia. Now, her own election crimes are about to be exposed and a key witness has agreed to testify against her. Earlier this week, the Senate Judiciary Committee sent out a subpoena to Glenn Simpson, co-founder of Fusion GPS, which has been associated with Clinton and her buddies for years. This is the same company that sent out the disgusting dossier of unsubstantiated allegations about President Donald Trump, including infamous golden showers. Initially, Simpson refused to testify, which is why the committee sent out the subpoena. But now he has stepped up to the plate. However, since that time, Mr. Simpson, through his attorney, has agreed to provide a transcribed interview and requested that the subpoena compelling his attendance at Wednesday's hearing be waived, Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, R. Iowa, and Ranking Member Diane Feinstein, D. California, said in a statement. We've reached an agreement on this request and have withdrawn the subpoena. Fusion GPS returned to spotlight after claims spread about Donald Trump Jr. and Russian lawyer Natalia Vazelnitskaya to get dirt on Clinton. Vazelnitskaya has ties to Fusion GPS, surprise, surprise. It's within reason to conclude that Clinton, Fusion GPS, and Vazelnitskaya teamed up to frame Trump.